Twice winners of the Scottish Junior Cup now come to find themselves in the big one. And if the Scottish Cup is renowned for anything, it is an upset. So join us tonight as the Knock take on the Sons of the Rock and let's see if there's a shock. It's Cumnock versus Dumbarton in the second round of the Scottish Cup. In the 70s and 80s, thousands of people used to attend games here at Townhead Park. A crowd of around 8,000 were seen here for the game against Auckland Lake Talbot, Cumnock's fierce rivals. And whilst Auckland Lake may have had the majority of the laughs in the past, the Knock have made a comeback that currently sit third in the West of Scotland Football League. And with the big nights returning here to Townhead Park, we caught up with club secretary Jamie Campbell to discuss just what it means. Joined here by David Weir. David, you said you were part of one of the trustees here at the club, is that right? Aye, I've been a trustee here for about two years now. Um, our founder, uh, Eric Bennett, sadly passed away just at Covid and um, we kind of rallied round to replace him and um, I was one of the, the guys that, um, that the other trustees kind of came to. Um, and aye, the rest has been, been history, I suppose. And as a club with big history, uh, twice twice winners of um, uh, the Scottish Junior Cup. How would you assess the season not so far sitting in the club in the uh, West of Scotland football league? You, you must be happy with the job that Ben McGinn is doing. It's been a great start to the season for us and I think we could actually be sitting top. There's been a couple of results that we, we, we should have won the games, um, we could have won the games and um, we have been for a couple of and a silly goals to lose, we'd have been sitting top, but it's fit for you, but uh, great start to the season, somebody said to me, you're better up there looking down, than you're looking up, so I'm quite happy. The issue with stadiums like Townhead Park is they're quite old fashioned, meaning it can be quite difficult for clubs like Cumnock when factoring in and disabled facilities for their supporters. So, let's ask Jamie, just what challenges do they face here at Cumnock when factoring in? facilities for the disabled fans. I think the, the biggest challenge for us is you're inheriting a, a, an old property that you have to kind of make, make use of for disabled facilities. You know, Cobbett Cumnock's never going to have a, a, or don't have a purpose built facility that incorporates um, disabled access. Now, we've done the best we can with the facility we've got, but we can always improve. And our, our, our real aim and, and, and um, hope for the future is to build a purpose built clubhouse and uh, create real disabled facilities for our, our, our disabled fans. And that was going to be my next question was, is there any plans for uh, moving forward? But you've just answered that. So. Do you then look at it and think, well, we're doing that here at Cumnock. Why can't teams with big stadia do the same? Oh, yeah, and right. teams that have more fun. Do you not think there's maybe an influence there? I think with Cumnock, and specifically how the enterprise is set up, there's more of a community outlook. Um, some of the bigger clubs, I think, you maybe lose the community aspect and, and the community involvement. I know a lot of clubs are trying to bring the community aspect back into them, um, but it come that will really grasp that community aspect and, and you know community and, and our fans and our fan base and our supporters is really at the heart of what we do here. So that that you know we we're, we're, we're as inclusive a club as you get, um, and we're we like that because of just how community minded we are. And one thing that I've loved about watching the West reduction into the pyramid system for me. And the Scottish Cup first round it proved that there's no much between the clubs in the West and the West of Scotland League and the ones above. So how important do you think that the pyramid structure has been 
that he's scheduling of that. And do you think it needs to be opened further because he's added? I was a bit sceptical about the pyramid scheme. Like, probably the vast majority of junior fans will have done it. It's not until nights like this when you see just the impact it's having on, on community and, and the youngsters get involved. And some of these youngsters have never really seen success on nights like this. It come to, I'm lucky enough to have seen you know, at least one, sorry, two junior cup finals. Uh, one we, we, we won, one we lost. But um, I think now that the pyramid, um, we are really beginning to see the, the fruits of your hard work and, and becoming an SFA approved club. Um, shine through because nights like this, I'm hoping for many more because this is going to be fantastic night. If the first round of the Scottish Cup proved anything, it's that there's not much of a gap between sides of the West of Scotland Football League and the leagues above. So, are the Cumnock fans confident that they could cause what the media would see as a shock here tonight? I reckon they can. I think they could take them tonight. They've started the season well, so I reckon they could a wee, a wee victory tonight. That's what I was going to ask you next. How do you assess the season so far and the job that, that Brian McGinn is doing? Here? I think he's doing a great job. Uh, team seems a settled team now as well and uh, seem to be getting a few good results. So, yeah. Joined by Gavin. Gavin, how long have you been coming to watch Cumberland for? Uh, for most of my life. So you're a big fan then? Right? Aye. What, what is it? Why did you choose a club like Cumberland then? Uh, uh, how did you go a bigger club on the side of I, I like Rangers. So what is it about coming to watch Cumnock that you enjoy? Actually, it's just fun to come with your pals and watch it. So it's the it's community aspect Aye. of coming and socialising with your mates. Do you find that you get more involvement here than maybe you might go to a bigger club and you feel more involved with it? Aye. Aye. Because it's not as much as you can in the end of the And then, um, are you hiding that you can add? to your Scottish Cup junior success by having a good result here tonight against the Martin and the big one. I think we're good. And what do you think your score's going to be then? 2-1 Cumnock. Do you by Finlay? Finlay. Your dad works here at Cumnock, so is that when you started coming to watch them or were you coming before that? Uh, uh, that's, well, I came before that when I was new. Uh, I was about three months when the first game. Wow, three months at his first game. Wow, that's amazing. And what is it you enjoy about coming to watch come? Just the atmosphere. That's two people that have said that they you know, like coming with their pals and so so. I so think you get more access to the come than what you would maybe if you went to a bigger club. Like you feel more involved with it and stuff like that. Who's your, who's your favourite come that point? I've heard a lot of people talking about Jordan Moore. Ah, he's, he's, uh, he's a goal. Everybody likes a goal machine, right? He's averaging about a goal a game at the minute. So, with somebody like Jordan Moore in the side, are you confident that? Yeah, there's out the night and, and beat them up. What do you think the score's going to be? Two on to the camera and Finlay. How long have you been coming to watch the Knock Boys? Like two years. And um, what do you enjoy about coming to, coming to watch teams like Cumnock? Good Good stuff, good stuff. And um, obviously it's a big game for Cumnock tonight. Um, Scottish Cup proper. They've done well in the Junior Cup. Are you confident that they can take that into tonight's game against the Bart? <laughs> Go on then, lads, give us a score prediction, what do you think? 3-1. 2-1. 2-1 to Cumnock. The Barton started the season on fire, winning the first six games. But since then, they've gone on a run of four games without a win. And included in that was a 6-0 defeat at the hands of Stowe and Albion. So it's safe to say that the Barton really are in need of a result tonight. So, are the fans nervous heading into this one? Yeah, as a, a regular fan, I would say yes. Um, particularly because we had a poor season last year. We got relegated from League 1 and out of League 2. And fantastic start to this season, but as you say, it's tailed away over the last four. And the Sterling Albion result was really poor. So uh, if you put it in that context, for certain fans, there was already pressure on the manager from last season. The good start has brought a bit more time. The third result against Stirling has been things a bit harder than tonight because it's come up, we're doing really well. I think uh, I would say there is a bit of pressure there. What has what the difference been compared to uh, the, the last four games here in the first six? Um, I say in the first seven games we, we were really compact defensively. Uh, teams found it difficult to break us down and we were very effective on the counter-attack and our number nine, Declan Byrne, was very clinical in front of the goal but the run stopped at Genoa, we lost 3-2 down there on a Tuesday I think it was 
and we were a lot more exposed defensively and then Sterling we got ripped apart really bad day at the office and we kind of changed shape in the Sterling game which the manager acknowledged after the game I don't know how much of a part that played but I don't know if he's going to return to the shape that served him well in the first seven games if he does I think we should hopefully do well and obviously when my dad went to Paul, I didn't know much about, about this league, but I haven't since watched it. I do a competitive and I don't think there's much of a difference in quality between sides that come up in the in the World League in Scotland. So what are you expecting tonight from, from coming up? Um, I'm a bit of a geek. Uh, so I've spent some time during the week looking at Cumberland highlights. Did he, did he, did he, did he ah, exactly, did he? exactly. So I've looked at some Cumberland games on YouTube and they seem to score quite a lot of goals. Um, and, you know, we are, we've got some good attackers as well, so I'm expecting goals. Um, if I was, if I had to make a prediction, I'm going to say 3-1 to Martin. Well, the first, the ones that won, they were, quite a lot of them were lucky ones, to be fair. I wish that Martin, they weren't, they've not played well yet at all. Even though they've had that great run, you know. They've been managing to get ones, but... What, and what do you think the difference has been between the first six games and the next four? Is it just been the fact that your luck's been running out a wee Aye, bit? Aye, a wee bit. I must admit, I'm no, no very keen on this tonight. <laughs> uh, but that was going to be my next question. How are you feeling? I'm not very confident, not confident at all, I must admit. Is there anything? I'm here in hope, I drove in hope more than expectations. The expectations, aye, I'm not that keen. What are you expecting to come up? Do you know what to put them on? I watched them on YouTube. I watched two or three games on YouTube and that. Ah, they're a good outfit, not a bad outfit. They'll definitely be harder than us. And then um, finally I'll end up with a score prediction for yourself, please. I've got to say 2-1 to the Martin. I have got to say that. But he's went for no confident. To end yeah, but it I've got to heart. say that. I can't, can't even know say that. He's ending out his heart at oh. I can't <laughs> say something else. <laughs> Who's that, by the way? <laughs> so here we've got the best dribbler in Scotland, uh, James McFadden. How have I got something on my chair? <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> How you doing, Fanny? I'm you good, right? mate. How are you? I'm good. Do you I'm get good. everywhere? Do you get more games than me? This, uh, easy. <laughs> get this to 17 new ball, I'm like, go here later. Um, what are you expecting for the game tonight? Competitive game. I think it's, I know there's divisions between them, but I think it'll be a competitive game. I think it'll be a really tough game. I would love to say there'll be a lot of football played, but I don't think it will be. I think it'll be a typical game that people will, will expect, cup tie game, um, and I think it could go either way, I really do. Do you think there's a wee bit of a pressure on Stevie Farrell, because he started flying one of his first six games, and there's no one in the last four, and a 6-0 defeat is still an album. There is. There, I think when you're, uh, when you're coming to the club that's below you, a couple of divisions below you, and it's on telly, the reason it's on telly is because people want to see a shot, so the pressure's there for him. I think he used to play for Cumberland as well, which adds a wee bit of spice to it. Um, so they'll be well aware the players will be the same. When you're in, like, when you're in these type of games as the, as the favourites, you just want to avoid a shot. You don't want to be that team that people speak about as, you know, that's a shot, but this is why we're all here. We want to see something a wee bit different. Last couple, because we're only up on for time, what you expect them to come up tonight then? Because it's a tight run, as you, as you see, and you just think they're going to be stuck at getting the mark place. I, I think, think they're going to try and put them No, I think we'll try and get the ball forward, try and put them under pressure early, put crosses into the box. We've got a, a striker who looks at a decent player as well, scores goals, and Jordan Moore. So I think that they'll fancy it. It'll be a good crowd, hopefully, it'll be a good atmosphere. I'll probably be able to hear you when I'm commentating, shouting. Um, so no, I no, think they'll the fancy emotional it. investment in it. I'm not at Fuff Park, Paddy, you know what you mean, I'm sure they'll fancy it, come up, no doubt about it. Are you just got prediction then before? Oh, I'll go for a 2-1 to come up. Joined here by the facility manager here at Cumberland. He's a guy that does a wee bit of everything. Is that right? Is that right? Is that right? Yeah, we've got, King? we've got quite a lot going on here, uh, community-wise. Uh, we've got quite a few youth football teams. We've got ladies teams, amateur team, walking football teams. So, um, and we do quite a wee bit for uh, all ability as well. And how important do you think that is for the people that come for their mental health? And Very important. Uh, it's really part of the routine. We've got guys that come along. Um, we've got all ability bikes here. We do in partnership with you know, East Tertiary Vibrant Communities. So we'll get £18,000 worth of bikes. We put them out every week. And the guys that come along, I mean, it's part of the routine. We've got guys with autism, cerebral palsy. We've got a wheelchair bike. So the, the wheelchair goes in the front of the bike. Somebody sits in the back, takes them around about. These guys come and I love it. I love taking part. We do a lot of all about stuff on the pitch there. We do football, we do tri-golf, mocha. Um, we're going to be doing some archery. 
Uh, hopefully, if I get the funding. Yeah. That, is, that was actually going to be my next question. How much of an issue is funding when it comes to things like these? Because I can't imagine it's easy to get. It's not easy to get, and there's so many groups that target funding. Um, it can be really difficult. Um, funding's an issue sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes when you're, you're going for funding, there's so many people want to divvy the pot. We've had a lot of unsuccessful applications as well as successful. And what, what more then would you like to see done to help you in, in, in making things happen for people with disabilities? People with, I, I think, all, all aspects? I think we really try our best to get things recognised. I mean, we share a lot of stuff in social media. Um, I think it's actually recognising um, there's a need for it. Because there's not enough provision for people to come along and do stuff like that. Um, I've got a guy come along tonight to watch the game who's actually um, the active skills coordinator uh, for support and learning schools and all that. So uh, we do quite a lot of stuff in partnership with him. But it's recognising there's a need to provide more. Yeah. And what what do you think other clubs can learn from what you do here today? You can take a leaf from your book because I'm going to be honest, this is the first time. And my time doing this is a channel that I've heard about anything like this. D At any club, never move, never move. Definitely. A size of so Pe what do you think people do take the lead phase. Um, we started a session, I started walking football for a, an alcohol and drug recovery group. Uh, so they were coming along and doing stuff as well. And people were coming and watching. So when we share stuff in social media, sometimes people say, oh, look at that, it's quite good. So it is about sharing ideas and hopefully other people will take what we're doing and go away and do a wee bit elsewhere. Well, that's what we're trying to do as a channel, help improve everything for everybody with any type of disability. So if there's anything that we can do then get in touch with. Greg is down the line, he clips it in and the header just goes wide of the post but fast start with the Martin there but it remains a no no. First half touch here for the home side, the ball's up 10 there thinking Ryan Carnworth that gets his head on it but his head is just straight at the goalkeeper. First goal I think it's going to be vital in this game, both sides have had their moments but as I say it remains no no. I think if I've ever seen one, I mean, VAR's just coming into the game this weekend, and I think that's one that would have been looked at. Obviously, we don't have it here. But Niff goes up for the head, head over the coming centre half, and the ball just kind of a drops, but Niff goes down holding his head, and the referee decides it's a penalty. I don't think it's a penalty like at all, but penalty to the man. <laughs> It's pretty rare to get that game of football and an all weather pitch and you see the water coming up but that's how wet it is here. The game's drab as well, half time, cut it now, the bottom one. <laughs> Really 
suppose it's how shite my hell line is. I'm quite playing Paul McGowan sitting here. <laughs> Mate, mate. Get yeah. off your glaze, get my, my, health, my health was looking a lot better on that round up than it is now. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of the game? I think the Barton scored a bit against it on a play, no? I agree with you, mate. I think the best spell of the game they've had, mate, coming into it and then they get caught in the counter, don't you? Aye, I think Cumnock have definitely come out. We walked past the dressing room at half time, you could hear Ginch Dean, the boys, at the fair play to them, man. They've, they've, they've gave a reaction, you know what I mean? They've definitely been the better side in the second half, but then Barton always looked at threat going forward on the counter. And I know we're both trying to vlog here, so Ryan quickly before I turn this <laughs> off. He's have got a game yourselves against Dan on Monday night. Aye. Is this game showing you that you can compete, teams at this level can compete against sides in League 2? Aye, of course mate, I think that as you can see the quality is definitely there, do you know what I mean? And I think our boys are no different, our boys are quality, quality players. So we've got into Monday night's game and it's going to be a tough one, we're under the illusions, but we're, we're, up, we're up for it and we're, we're going to get our best shot and hopefully it's enough on the night. Anyway boys, I'm about to finish off with this pie that's on my <laughs> I'm throat. guessing coming at now have to go for it, so it'll be interesting to see if Dumbarton can get a third and see the game out. Full time in the town of Park and Prince you come at one Dumbarton free. Let's get into the review. We'll start with the facilities. I will say that they're elevated. We had a look later on. Uh, they do work with what they've got here at Cumnock. We took the decision to come over here at the side and view the game to the side of the park to get better game footage. It was a bit crowded as well, which meant I couldn't sit in there, so I had to come over here. And um, they are on the front foot, they do do a lot for disabled people in the community and having spoke to people off camera, they are looking to make improvements. I suggested them, if they get the funding, to put in a wee ramp with a platform because there's plenty of space up the back there. So for facilities, I'm going to give Cumnock an 8 out of 10. On to teams in the game now. Coming at the home side, I thought they were much better second half. Don't think they created anything in the first half. Um, but aye, they had a good few chances through Jordan Moore, got their goal, and at one each, I thought that they were the team that were going to go on and take the lead. But then Dumbarton sucker punch to get the goal against the runner play. And then after that, it's about half a come because they have to change the game, and then Dumbarton get the third. So, going to give Cumnock a 6 out of 10. On to Dumbarton. All I can really say about their wee side. subscribe to this man. What a YouTube channel, can he be that? <laughs> Cheers mate. What I will say is, they were critical. They took their chances. I don't think that they did much, apart from the goals that they scored. Um, but not their timing of their goals was spot on. I think they were lucky to go into half time 1-0 up, because I still don't think it was a penalty. Although I'm being told that the defenders put his arm out and caught, caught the striker, but I, I, don't, I don't think it's a penalty kick. Uh, again, I'm going to give Dumbarton a 6 out of 10, because I don't think there was much in the game. I just think that Dumbarton did take their chances. And we will move on to the referee now. I mean, I, I have to go with how I see it. I don't think the first one's a penalty. I think he missed a couple of shouts for coming up for penalty kicks as well. There was one down there in the first half, and then one here in the second half that I think maybe could have been given. So I don't think he can look at his performance and say that he's come off here uh, having had a good game. I'm going to give the referee a 4 out of 10 and that brings our total here for the match at Terry Park, the Scottish Cup second round between Cumnock and Dumbarton to 24 out of 40. 
just want to say before I go, thank you to everyone here that come up for having us along. We've really enjoyed the day, despite the weather. Uh, and we do really hope to come back soon and see what improvements they do make in the future. And please guys, if you've enjoyed this video, like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.